Uh, hello, so today we are doing this problem called gray code um, as, um, as practice for the, um, the video explanation of a gray code that I put up just pre before this. Um, um, it would be very useful to watch that one first and then um, watch this one after it. And so this problem is a direct application of that and so it just says that definition of the gray code which we look at which is a binary numeral system where every two successive values um, differ only by one bit. Um, and here we get a, an integer n, which represents basically the total number of bits in, in the code that they want. And we want to print the sequence. And the sequence must begin with zero. And so for two, um, these are the, the bits, each differ by one, and the result should be this. Um, and for zero, there is just um, zero. Um, so this is a direct application for that one, and so I'm just going to put as a first solution the one um, explained in that video, um, which if you want to know why, it, you just need to look at that video, but um, that one is just, you need to, um, so the way to solve that is just construct um, a list first, like this, um, then after that we need to, um, we need to go through for n, we need to go through all to, to, to the power of n combinations. As we saw in that explanation, that's the number of um, that's the, so we can that's the number of combinations in a in a gray code of n uh, bits. So we can either do it this way to, to the power of n, or we can also s do it like this. This is the the same thing, um, and then we can just add um, the current sequence, and that just by XORing the the current the XORing the bits, the binary representation uh, with the binary representation shifted to the left. So basically taking in the binary representation, taking the bit at one position and the one to the left. That's basically what we are doing here. And XORing the, those two that gets us the the one f the that gets us the value for the gray code. And we can just return this at the end. And that's pretty much all there is to it. Um, in terms of time complexity, um, here the time complexity is of two to the power of n, because um, because that's how many um, time how many times we're on the for loop. And in terms of space complexity, this is just of one. Um, so next we'll look at um, at a different solution that uses also another um, another formula from the previous video explanation about gray codes to solve this. Um, okay, so the second solution, uh, one of the um, things we looked at in that video explanation about the gray code was um, a recursive formula that defines the gray code, um, that defines the gray code sequence for value n. And so we said that it's, so L1 is zero and one, and also we can augment this by saying for L0 it's just zero, as the problem said. And then Ln is just concatenate zero with the previous sequence, Ln minus one, and add to that one as a first value concatenated with the previous sequence reversed, right? So that's what we came up with when we said that the way to get, get the gray code sequence was to take n equal to one is just zero and one. And here you could add n equal to zero is just zero. And then for n equal to two, just take the previous values of zero and one and reflect them, right? Just take zero and one here and then reflect them. So kind of using a mirror or something. So you get one first and then zero. And the, the first part, which is the previous sequence not reversed, is just put zero in front of them. The second one, which is the previous sequence reversed, just put one, val one values in front of them. And the same thing we did for n equal to three. We took the uh, n equal to two sequence, which is this entire thing, and we just put it here in blue. In, uh, and then we reversed it. So one, zero, one, one for after that, and then zero, one, and then zero, zero. And then the first ones, we put zero, which is the one in light blue here in front of them and the, the, the mirrored one uh, we put one in front of them and so that's the direct application of this formula and we can just take this and convert it into use it as a recursive function right and so that's what we will be doing and so to do that we can just say get the result for gray code 
um, of n minus one as a recursive um, operation, and then just construct our result by doing basically a zero plus s for every s in the previous result, right? And then add to that uh, one concatenated to the reversed previous sequence, which would be just for s for s in the reversed previous sequence, which would be just reversing res, right? And then once we get all of these, we can return them, and then we will get them as strings. So we'll get them like in this format, right? And so in, in Python, we can convert that into binary using just int with the string representation of the binary and two saying it's base two to get the, the number so that we can return zero, one, three, two, and um, those numbers basically. Um, yeah, so it's a direct application of the recursive formula here, and so um, let's write it and type it into um, into lead code. Um, we will use our base case for for our recursive function would be f uh, for n equal to zero, the value is just zero. For n equal to one, it would be zero and one. Um, okay, so let's type that. Um, okay, so let's type the the same formula. So for n equal to zero, which is our base case. Uh, we need to just return zero, right? So let's just return, it's just the bit zero, right? And then for n equal to one, um, we said it's zero and one, right? So we are going to um, just return them in, in a string format of binary. So like for zero, it would be for n equal to four, it would be like this. Um, and then I just need the helper here for my recursive function. You, you'll see why in a, in a moment. And then now I can do, so this is n equal to 1, so now these are our base cases. Now let's do the recursive call, which is just um, getting the previous sequence. So this one here would be um, ln minus 1 in the formula. Um, and this here is l1, and this here is l0. And here we will need for the helper to get the previous sequence, so n minus 1. And then uh, we can just do the same thing we said in the formula, which is concatenate 0 with n, n minus 1, and then concatenate n1 with the reversed uh, previous sequence, right? And so that would be d doing, like, doing it like this. So we we'll need to concatenate 0 with every element of the previous sequence. And then add to that, concatenating one to the reflected uh, portion of the of the sequence, which is just the the previous sequence reversed, right? So we would concatenate, put one in front of those. So for s in um, in the reversed previous sequence, right? And now that we have that, uh, we can call that function here. But this will return to us, um, if I print this, you could see um, where it returns. So you can see it prints them in bits, right? So we need them to be converted to integers, as I said in the explanation. And so that would mean what we will do here is we will return. Each one of them will convert it into an int. So let's call these um, s in that and convert um, s to 4 s in that, right? And basically this here will convert any binary sequence in a, in a string format into a number, um, into an integer. And so if we run this, <coughs> Um, that is, yeah, return. Okay, let's submit. Okay, so that passes. Um, in terms of um, time complexity here, the time complexity here, we do at most n calls, right? Because every time we reduce by one, and so the time complexity here would be. Um, so it would be just O of n, right? And then for the uh, for the space complexity, um, we are using a recursion here, so it's um, uh, it's not a recursive, and so we would need to use the st a stack, and so that would mean here we would have O of n also. 
Um, so it's slightly better in terms of time complexity, but um, uh, we pay a cost with the space complexity here. Um, yeah, so that's it for this video. Um, thanks for watching and see you next time. Bye.